What's up guys? So, let me start this video off first by saying, <clears throat> this is my opinion, what I'm about to get into. This is all my opinion I've spent, actually, if I want to really get into it, I've spent several years thinking about it, ever since I was in the Marine Corps. I've been out for four years now, <clears throat> um, and there was a good amount of time when I was in that I had thought about it before too. And that simple question is, should civilians train? <clears throat> Which in essence is, as someone who's prior military, given no combat experience, <clears throat> should civilians train? Now, that's a seemingly simple question, and honestly it has a simple answer. Yes. However, there's a lot of consideration that needs to go to it. And first of all, don't mind what I'm doing. I need to eat something. <clears throat> uh, it's in the bottom of my bag. So, let me start this off with a little bit of history. When I was in the Marine Corps <clears throat> in the infantry, um, the first thing that really made me think about this was uh, actually, this is not a shout out or any kind of like plug or anything, it was Lucas from T-Rex Arms. Because he was a civilian that was doing a lot of shit that uh, pretty much only military had done before. Or at least shown they were doing. Now, as a Marine infantryman, I thought, <clears throat> okay, well, regardless of how good he looks doing it, like proficient. Ooh, smells like cereal. Um, nutrient survival. Become exceptional. Apparently, all I got to do is pour it in some water, and uh, it'll be good to go. <clears throat> so, and again, as, as an infantryman, I was like, okay, who the fuck is this kid? Why does he think he can do this? I had the same mindset that, uh, well, Dakota Meyer got lit up for recently. Um, which one would be better? I think I'll go with this one. I pulled this one from a creek. A really good creek, but I'll go with that one. Um, but it just, it made me think more about it, and I hadn't really um, elaborated on it in a long time. But I think there's a lot of things that are very important here. As, <clears throat> and let me put the Marine Corps infantryman's hat on, okay? From that perspective, I completely get where he's coming from. I really do. There. And it comes from pride, and I don't mean it, it's because you you're proud of what you did. And Dakota Meyer, <clears throat> he fucking did some shit, all right? He did some shit that, uh, hell, makes him incredibly well-known throughout the military. I think uh, I heard about him when I was a young Marine from my Marines. I'm actually going to see if this will work just pouring it in here. Um, it's probably going to be better warm, but... Unless I want to pop a breech pen. I don't have anything to do that with. Um, <clears throat> so as a Marine and seeing what he and knowing what he did and everything, I got huge respect for the guy. So when I first saw that video, I was like, okay, well, it's Dakota Meyer. Like, he's already shown to have good thought processes. And I watched the whole thing, and honestly, it was sent to me. And then it really got me thinking. This rotted log under my butt is falling. Um, where does that mindset come from? Besides pride, it has a lot of ego. It has a lot of elitism in there. As in, in order to do this, you have to sign your name on a dotted line. Which, there's something to be said for that. There is something to be said for... I will put myself in a position to take more risk in order to protect those I love and the country I love. In whatever aspect it is. <clears throat> There's absolutely something to be said for that. So with that, there is a level of respect to go with it. However, not just like not every branch of the military is created equal, not every job is created equal. Not every person in the job by their own merit or demerit is equal in capability and knowledge a lot of the dudes from my platoon say the same thing about me um i fucked up my knee like fuck 
two, three months into the fleet. And I dealt with problems with from my platoon and from my knee and, I, and from myself the whole time because of it. I didn't achieve my goals. <clears throat> so there comes a point, it's like, I know what I can and cannot say. I know what I can and cannot do. And I know where my expertise lies and where it doesn't. But <clears throat> as a Marine infantryman, as military in general, the first thing that you're really taught, <clears throat> the thing they try to drive home, is to be a leader. In order to be a leader, you need to teach and influence those around you to be better by setting an example. Now, one of the uh, things that the Marine Corps really teaches is creating better citizens. So when you get out of the Marine Corps, you can still see that, hey, that person was a Marine because of the example that they set in their everyday life. That's the hope, at least. It's kind of like oatmeal in here. Um, so I was thinking about that, okay? That's a uh, <clears throat> leadership trait from the Marine Corps. Oh, fuck, it's cold out here. I'm getting cold now that I'm not moving. Um, so as you get out, you need to be a leader. And I don't know, shit, how many infantrymen do I know that got out of the Marine Corps and like, I'm going to teach my buddies to bang? Yeah, I'm going to do that. But they're selective, like, I'm not going to teach that random guy, because fuck him, but I'm going to teach you, because we're cool. Okay, and I understand that. I've been there. I had the same thought process. <clears throat> but then, as I was transitioning out of the Marine Corps, I was a marksmanship instructor for about six months. And I taught a lot of Marines, and I had the opportunity to learn from um, not just other Marines and everything, but other uh, departments of the government that were trained on the range I was at. And I got to see a wide example of what those departments learned and what they didn't learn. And some of them were seriously lacking. And then as I got out doing uh, security contract work overseas, I didn't do anything cool. Just static. Just static. And then I was a firearms instructor. Nothing cool. Again, I'm the first one to say, hey, this was my experience. But <clears throat> lessons learned can come from anywhere. And what I want to mean by that what I want to explain that is I let loose into a uh, a question I got the other day is instructors teaching what they've used in the real world but there's an inherent problem with that there's been a generation or two throughout the military that have never gone to combat and then they have to teach those skills that they were taught by those in combat and pass them on so there's a generational gap, but that knowledge flows. And my best example is for thousands and thousands and thousands of years, tribes and villages and clans and communities have sat around a fire talking war stories, talking hunting stories, passing on the knowledge to the younger generation <clears throat> or to those around them so that they get into that situation, if they come in, uh, across a, a scenario that they have that tool in their toolbox that they can use without having to learn it firsthand. They can re reference, hey, this is what he did. He's alive. Maybe this is going to work for me. And this isn't to excuse my lack of experience. This is a learning process. Going from a Marine Corps infantryman's mindset and then stepping out and then being an instructor and then in a civilian instructor and then being a civilian myself, you have to open your mind into what you're doing. You have to evolve. So keeping that pride and saying, oh, you, you didn't sign your name on the dotted line and you didn't kiss your family goodbye, like, that is some emotional shit. Having to say, hey, I love you. I hope to see you again, but I don't know if I'll make it back. Not exactly saying it, but feeling it and knowing that that's there elephant in the hug not the room because it's much tighter than that um and my example for this isn't my experience leaving i grew up with my dad for 15 years contracting in iraq my entire adolescence he come home for two weeks gone six to ten months two weeks gone six to ten months my entire time i've been the one leaving but i've been the one left as well so seeing it from that side as a child 
and my father waking me up, trying not to wake me up in the middle of the night to kiss me goodbye because he's about to go hop a plane back. That's huge. There's some real emotion there. There's some real <clears throat> depth of conscience there that has to be explored and discovered. However, what that is not is that is not an entry into that world. That does not mean I can sit there, I can sit here and say, you haven't felt it, you don't deserve to go out and train, you don't deserve to protect your family, you don't deserve to throw on something that can save your life, throw on camouflage that can save your life because it helps you blend into your environment. You can't do that because you haven't kissed your family goodbye, not knowing if it was going to be for the last time. What is that? And to get on to another point, PTSD isn't just a military thing. PTSD, first responders, police, EMT, paramedics, firefighters, surgeons, doctors, holy shit, the PTSD there is real. Okay? Open your mind and realize that it's not just that avenue or that avenue or that avenue. It applies to everything. Go ahead and shoot me for this. The fundamentals of marksmanship all apply to each other. It's overlapping fields of fire. Everything overlaps. It's the same thing here. Your Marine Corps hat, your civilian hat, your dad hat, your husband hat, your son, daughter, your instructor hat, they're all worn at the same time, and you need to view those things in a full open scope. So to sit there and say, hey, you shouldn't do this because you never signed that and you're a poser, you're representing something that you're not about. That's complete horseshit. More cops, more first responders, again, <clears throat> are using life and death saving skills every single day than you'll ever know about. Right now, we're not in a, in a time of high conflict. There are certain units throughout the military that are doing what needs to be done in places that don't need to be said. But if you want to sit here and gatekeep and say you can't do that, well, okay, how about this? Repelling is part of a special operations thing. I was in special operations. I repelled out of off towers. I fast roped out of helicopters. I spy rigged and hung from a rope off of helicopters. It was for a fucking air show. But hey, I still did it. Um, but I'm military, but now I'm a civilian. Does that mean I can't do that anymore? But if I'm a wildland firefighter or I'm a search and rescue and I need to repel off a mountainside to go save someone who's fallen, can I not do that just because I'm not fucking military? No, you're in a life or death field practice that you need to practice those skills. It's the same thing with gunfighting. The biggest example I can give is the Revolutionary War and the Civil War, because those, as an American, should hit home. The Revolutionary War and the Civil War. I want you to think about it as in they were fought in people's yards, on people's properties, in people's farms. We, as Americans, have the, fucking the strongest fighting spirit in the world, in history, the most powerful military. And then at one point, we decided, you know what? We're going to fuck each other up. And we did more damage to each other than anyone's ever done to each other in that amount of time. Holy God. So you want to gatekeep the civilians. They're the reinforcements, bro. If, if we show our ass any more than we have been in the last year and a half, you think the 1% combat arms within the 1% of the United States population that's military is going to be able to defend the 99.99% .99 of the rest of the population just because you wanted to protect what you had your elite mindset in, your pride in? Teach that. Be a fucking leader and teach those skills to civilians. Teach them responsibly. Teach them to how to have the mindset to attack a situation with responsibly armed citizenry. So that if something happens, our national defense is America. It's Americans. It's not just, oh, drone strikes are going to save us. No. It's going to be the citizen 
who stepped up to be a leader by being a responsibly armed citizen in a time of crisis in the country. So now as I'm a civilian and I'm instructing on the, <clears throat> I'm trying to do, you know, more full-time stuff with it. I'm training these civilians to do exactly what I'm saying. And I'm thinking about it. And every time I ask them, hey, what are you training for? Regardless of it's an individual or a class of uh, students. Oh, fuck, man. I cannot tell you a single person that's like, I don't want to do it for self-defense. I don't want to learn to shoot for self-defense. And you know what? There's some dudes out there. They just, they see it as a practical thing. As, hey, this is fun. This is my hobby. This is my competition. I like to plink, whatever. That's cool. Those skills that you're doing while you're plinking, if you get into a situation or if a situation happens around you and you decide, I'm going to act. That's all it is, a decision. I'm going to act. Then you can step up and use those skills. Even if they weren't deliberate, they still work. Now, thinking as much about this as I have, <clears throat> and going on and on and processing like, hey, is this the right thing to do or whatever, there's more to consider about it. Now, stepping out of the Marine Corps infantryman's hat which I kind of did already but whatever and more into just a civilian who's never served if you want to think of it that way is you need to understand that you didn't sign a line and say hey I'm going to be willing to put myself in a bigger position in a more likely position excuse me to put my life on the line for those I love in my country you didn't step into a team and say hey you depend on me for your life. I depend on you for my life. I fucking hate you or I fucking love you. I don't care. We're a part of a team, a squad, a tribe, a unit. We're going to depend on each other. You didn't do that. And the reason I'm saying this is because you got those fucks out there that act, that do the stolen valor shit. And that pisses us all off. I got a real big personal problem with that from personal uh, history within my family that I just, I'm not going to get into. I'll get too pissed. It drives me nuts. When all this shit popped off with me, people had a lot of misconceptions of my background, and I fucking squashed it all every time it came my way because I did not want any misconceptions. Just the dude who happened to be in the right place to do the right, and I, because of mindset and training, I did the right thing, thankfully. And that guy on that video that I took the rifle from that went viral, he fucking shot and killed someone. Weeks after that, shot a motherfucker in the back and killed him. So there's that. Now, as a civilian, you need to understand that there is pride in what military does. Especially those who try to do it well, and they take pride in the job. Especially, honestly, Marines. Oh my god. Motherfuckers will fight each other over pride. My uniform looks better than yours. No, it doesn't. Fuck you. Hit them. So you need to make sure that you are... In my opinion, again, let me re reference this. In my opinion, if asked, don't play it fucking off. Straight up say it and be proud. If you are a citizen and someone's like, hey, what's your background? You fucking be proud. Say, hey, I'm an American citizen. I'm a civilian and I'm stepping up to train and get ready and prepare for whatever if I have to get in a fight or if I have to save someone's life with medical training. Be fucking proud of that. No hide it. Make it your fucking headliner. I don't care. I'm a responsibly armed citizen. Travis Haley. Uh, what do you say? Um, 
just a civilian who loves to train or bang or shoot, whatever he said, Lucas Bakken. Like, you got dudes out there, and I'm getting really cold, so I can't really think that well. You got dudes out there <clears throat> that can fucking shoot like crazy, and they have a skill set of being able to understand how the body scientifically and philosophically, if you will, or even holistically, how the body and the mindset and the lifestyle goes in behind the gun. How the way of the gun drives the life. Be proud of it. There's nothing to be ashamed of. Your life took a different path. I didn't join the Marine Corps until I was 21. I was in the delayed entry program at 17. My life took another path for a few years until I could get it back on track. What I want you to understand is there are more pieces to this. I got rain on my camera. There we go. There are more pieces to this and more bits of understanding than just comes to the eye. And you need to take the time to look at it and understand. Because there's a lot of hard, hard, hard feelings. Check that. Erase that. Delete it. There's a lot of strong feelings on both sides. However, it is the American right via the Second Amendment which protects all others to have firearms and train with them. And I was listening to... God, this has been stuck with me for days now. I was listening to Joe Rogan and Ben Shapiro. And I think it was Ben Shapiro that said this. The U.S. Constitution wasn't written for the country that it is, it is then. It is written and was written for the country that we are trying to be, that we are meant to be. We're still not there yet. That Constitution may have been written in the 1770s, but we in 2021 are still not yet the country we need to be. And that makes me think, Matthew McConaughey, when he got up in his speech, he said, <clears throat> he got asked, who's your hero? And he thought about it, and he thought about it, and he came back and he told the guy, my hero is me in 10 years. Oh my God, who am I going to be in 10 years? Who is this country going to be in 2021? We're fucking slacking. Who is this country going to be in 2031? What kind of shooter, what kind of instructor, what kind of husband, hopefully what kind of father am I going to be in 2023? Right? We are not yet where we need to be as a country. Yes, I understand history. All great empires have about 250 years. We are still the greatest experiment there has ever been in history. And there is no reason why we can't beat any of those. It's not too bad. It would probably be pretty good when it's warm, but... Four o'clock. I got about a two and a half hour hike out. I'm fucking cold. <clears throat> I'm at about 5,400 foot elevation. You guys can't see, but there's fucking snow and everything everywhere. So I'm going to end this. And maybe I just want to take a... Uh, a note from Grantham. <clears throat> Maybe I'm just overly verbose. But having an open mind. Having a mindset of. What is their position. And how are they viewing this. Step into their shoes. And get an idea of that view. To understand. And allow that to broaden. So if I look at this person's view, I look at this person's view, I look at this person's view, what did I just get? I got that big a fucking view. But none of it helps if you're so goddamn stuck in your fucking way of thinking, if you're so stuck in your position. The whole phrase, put down roots, always bothered me. Even though it's meant as a, a warm thing of this is my family thing. I understand that. But you show me a man that planted his roots 
I'm going to show you someone who's never, who hasn't grown since. Because they haven't moved. They haven't seen more. They've experienced more. That's, a, that's I'm not going to get into this, but just to say it. Most Americans never leave their town. Never leave their state. They never venture to the other side of it. They never leave this country. They never get a perspective on what outside America is like. And oh my God, even though a lot of people outside of America hate us, where do you think they all want to be? They want to be here. They want to be here even though they want to take their stupid shit here too. Just like people fleeing uh, California or Seattle because the laws and everything are getting terrible. They're taking their fucked up mindset to another state and screwing it up. It's happening all the time here. People coming up to Washington. Now people in Washington are fleeing to Texas and Arizona. So, again, I'm going to leave this here. I'd say it's a sponsor of the video, but or not. I told him I'd try this stuff out on a good hike on this one. Oof, ugh, cold. I need to get moving. Um, nutrient survival is pretty fucking great so far, actually. It's my first one. I mean, it's kind of gross looking. Ah! Well, here. Probably. Ta-da! It's kind of like oatmeal, right? They got a lot of different flavors. I got like five of them in here. Super easy to pack. However... I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to get walking. Throw on my fucking little pack here. Eat some food on the way. Grab my 13.7 Recce here. My Sons of Liberty. And uh, hike my ass out of here. And I'm cold. So I need to get moving because this environment and these mountains can really fuck with you. I'm five hours drive into the mountains in a three hour hike in pretty much. So I need to go. Ah. Don't forget, all Americans, get out and bang.